Today I will be showing you a horizontal to vertical seam. A horizontal to vertical seam is used anywhere a vertical piece of knitting is seamed to a horizontal piece of knitting. So for example, at shoulder, at uh, shoulder seams. To begin, you need a horizontal and a vertical piece. And you will need to find the centers of these pieces. Ideally, now if you if this was at a shoulder seam, then it would be easy here because there would be a seam along this edge at the center. But your uh, sleeve, you would need to find the center of your sleeve. So I'm just using pins to mark that center. And you want to match these up with the centers matching and the bind off edge up against the edge. The, the important step is to measure your gauge and compare it row versus stitch. So I need to find my stitch gauge for this piece and you will measure uh, your gauge whole columns of stitches uh, to the closest one eighth of an inch and get your stitches per inch. For this swatch I have uh, five stitches per inch. Then you measure your row gauge for the vertical piece. Again measure as big of a length as you can, whole rows of stitches, count the number of rows and measure it to the closest one eighth of an inch and divide and get your rows per inch and on this piece I have seven rows per inch. Then you need to determine your ratio. So my ratio is five stitches to seven rows. I like to visualize uh, so I kind of map it out. So I have five stitches per inch and seven rows per inch so for every seven rows, I need to be seaming five stitches. So I kind of map it out and I could do one bar row per stitch and then two bars, that would be two rows, and then one bar and then two bars again, that would be two rows, and then one bar and that would be my repeat. One, two, one, two, one, one, two, one, two, one. Or alternately, I could space it two one two one one and then repeat. It's, it results in the same thing. You need to make sure that you never seam more than two bars, two rows at a time. Don't pick up three, don't pick up four to try to make, get your ratio to work. Always the most will be two. And spread those two out when you have only a few where you need to seam two. So instead of doing two, two, one, 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 that bunches those twos up. I spread them out as evenly as possible. So now that I know my ratio and I have the centers matched, I can begin and you should start from the center and work your way to the edges. So you come out of a whole stitch in the row below the bind off edge. So I will work, I'll work from the center to the right first. So I'll come out of the center of that stitch and I will pull my seaming thread and leave a long tail that's enough to work the second half of my seam. And I will remove that pin. And now I can begin, so I need to find the salvage stitch, which is right here. So I'm going to be picking up the bars of the rows 
between the salvage stitch and the first stitch. And I'm going to begin from this point, this center. So I said my ratio is one, one, two, one, two, one. So I will begin and get one bar bar and I will hold them oriented this way so I can see the bars. Now I go into the center of that stitch and come out the center of the next stitch and now I need to catch two bars. One, two, Then again, into the center and out of the center. You're getting every single stitch. It's only on the rows where you are sometimes getting two. So the next one will be one. Into the center of the stitch, out of the center of the next. And then two bars for my next pickup. One, two. into the center, out of the center, and then one bar. And then I will repeat, so it's one bar again. One bar. And then two bars. One, two. Try not to split or catch, uh, split any of the stitches or accidentally catch some of the selvage stitch. A nice blunt needle is good. And then one bar into the center and then out of the center. And I will end there or I could the next step be another two and then back down into the selvage. So that, that's actually what I'll do. And you can pull tight and There's no puckering. I've used this swatch to seam quite a bit, so it's it's the tension looks a little weird there because it's been pulled a lot, but there's there's no puckering. So now I will thread the needle onto the other end of the thread and I am in the back. Here, so I need to move over and come out of the next stitch over to begin. And what I want to do to maintain that ratio is reverse. So I was doing one, two, one, two, one this way. So now I want to do one, two, one, two, one this way, which is the same, but it's, it's, uh, it's working this way. If I had been working this repeat across, I would begin this way and do one, one, two, one, two. But I was doing this one, one, two, one, two, one, so now I'm going to do one, two, one, two, one, which happens to be the same. If your ratio is different, it will be different and this will make more of a difference, but mine just happens to be a palindrome, the same both ways into the center, out of the center. Oops. I caught one last time, now I need to catch two bars. Into the center, out of the center. Then one, and so on and so forth across. 
and you will you will find then that your ratio is maintained all the way across the seam from the center out and if you've calculated your ratios correctly there should be absolutely no puckering along this seam line. So that is how to seam a horizontal to a vertical edge. Thanks for watching.